Uh, welcome to my presentation on Leaving Certificate Economics. Um, I'm going to run through a two-year plan. Um, you can find further um, resources and this document on the website there below, mrmcgarry.weebly.com. Unfortunately, MC wasn't available, so we have the free one at least. But uh, if you log on to that, you can go into economics, the tab economics, and then you'll find loads of resources. On economics, here are a list of DVDs and documentaries that are a good idea to watch to, get, to give yourself a, a feeling idea for economics. So the ascent of money, the love of money, addiction to money, shock doctrine, capitalism, love story, the corporation, animal farm, civilization, the West and the East. I'm going to talk to you um, about a plan. I think it's very good for leaving start the economics two-year plan uh, scheme work. And I hope it'll be helpful for teachers and students alike. So we'll just go through it. Uh, we won't go through every single bit in it, but we'll uh, we'll go through bits and parts of it that I think are important. Um, so first of all, economics as as a, just a quick overview is a look at all the money. The circulation of money in uh, it could be a country, it could be in a union like the European Union, it could be in international trade, but it's all the different resources, uh, the stuff we own, uh, the money, the profit, the enterprise, um, all that, how it operates, and how successful it it operates together, in line with government policy, will help us form a good Irish economy. A good, strong Irish economy means an economy that's making lots of money, uh, where unemployment is low, um, and where everyone's standard of living is high. You know, you have good infrastructure in the country, etc., etc. Uh, if you look at underdeveloped countries, and developing countries, if you've ever traveled, you'll see Ireland is one of the, one of the, one of the I suppose, richest countries in the world in terms of certain standards and infrastructure and that. Again, there's a flip side to that in, the, in that our mortgages and, and rents are some of the highest in Europe. So we have certain inflation uh, problems, which means the price of goods and services of certain items in Ireland uh, isn't good. But then the price of, of, of goods and services for other things in Ireland are quite good. If you think of pennies close, um, not the, the most expensive in the world. Um, so the price of a pillow here, for example, might be cheaper the price of a pillow, say, in Eastern Europe that might not have pennies. So there's a lot of factors to that, yeah, and we're not going to go into too much more detail on that, but that's just to give you a quick overview. So the economy is basically goods and services. Think of goods and services. Think of inflation rates, exchange rates. Uh, think of inflation. Think of jobs. Um, and you're on the right path, yeah. Really important subject, by the way. Really uh, great sub sub subject for getting jobs when you leave. Um, I'll show you another video that proves that actually that's one of the, the best course you can do for, for getting high earning jobs. Yeah. Um, also, it's a brilliant uh, general education. If you want to know how the world operates in terms of um, economies and business, which is the reason why we have jobs and the reason why we've uh, governments function well or badly and the reason we have money in a country. And it's huge, huge, massively interesting and important subject. Okay. So, there's a few videos to, to whip your appetite on economics. Um, there's loads of good uh, newspapers as well. If you look on Friday, you know, the Friday weekend, there are Irish Times. Um, I buy that every Friday and I find Dave McWilliams in that is excellent, really forward thinking economist. And economists are people who talk about economies in Ireland and around the world and give ideas on how we might improve, for example, the Irish economy, they'd concentrate because they're Irish uh, economists. Another fellow is Dan O'Brien. He's in the Sunday Independent. Um, he's a great read as well uh, for up-to-date information on the Irish economy and ideas on how we could improve the Irish economy. Yeah, especially during COVID-19. Okay, so you see here, Dan, there's contents of learning. So it's a two-year course. And it's broken into microeconomics and macroeconomics. The way I remember microeconomics is you, you want to think of the likes of elasticity of demand. You want to think of supply curves, demand curves. You want to think of diagrams and curves generally. And you're going to do a lot of uh, formulation of curves and diagrams in that section. Um, we start by giving you an introduction to economics. 
we go through different economic systems, consumers, factors of production, land, labor, capital, enterprise, um, elasticity of demand, and perfect different types of competition. Monopoly, you might know already, is when there's very little competition. We have one big company and they dominate the market and there's a very little competition. The others are just variants of that. And then you've got the government and how that can help or not help the economy in the case of one of our governments who help crash uh, the economy, well, it might have been successful, successive governments who help crash our economy, given inflated house prices and uh, over borrowing on, from the banks and investing in things that um, really didn't turn out to be great investments. Okay, but we've, we've somewhat bounced back and then we've again now fallen back a little bit given uh, COVID-19. Okay, taxation, and taxation is going to be an interesting one to look at during the national budget this year. The national budget is where the government sits down and says what we're going to do about our economy, what are we going to tax, where are we going to get money in, where are we going to spend, what um, infrastructure and service are we going to increase and spend. So that's the national budget there. Money and banking, and banking is a big um, operator. We've lots of huge banks here in Ireland, some foreign, some Irish. And again, there's a lot of criticism towards the banking system that uh, some people uh, argue, a lot of people argue, that led to our, 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 our crash as well. Um, okay, inflation and the CPI, the CPI there stands for Consumer Price Index, and uh, it's the price of goods and services. Um, high inflation, uh, again, some is associated with rapid high inflation, is where the price of goods and services rapidly go up, 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 up in price, and they become unaffordable for people's wages, uh, and given their size, their mortgages and everything. Uh, deflation is then when the price of goods and services um, start going downhill. Um, and, and if they do that rapidly, that can be uh, that can also be dangerous for an economy. Okay, so international trade is how we trade with international partners around the world. And uh, the big trading blocks are China, Russia. Um, you've got the USA. You've got um, European Union. Europe, European Union will uh, negotiate big trade deals with China and and America. Um, Ireland, uh, then some of our biggest trading partners are the UK, our nearest neighbor. We've got the USA as well, um, Canada, but we've also got the European Union even before that, uh, because obviously there's a lot less red tape now that we're part of the European Union. We can buy and sell services and we can import and export goods and services within the EU uh, a lot easier, a lot more easily. Okay, so then we've got the likes of uh, theory of economics. You've got some great people who come up with great ideas on how to improve uh, countries' economies around the world. Then you've got a history of economic thought, uh, which ties into that as well, looking at uh, different ideas about economics and how it can improve economics um, nationally, which is in Ireland, European, uh, and then worldwide, uh, internationally. Okay, so then you've got different techniques then for teaching. You've got this KWH. Uh, L, which I love using in class. That's basically finding out uh, from your students what would what do they know already about a particular topic in economics. What would they like to know? Um, how are they going to go? Can you show them different resources and different ways about how they would go about uh, learning economics? And then they write down some bullet points down of what they learned on that particular day or could be on that topic and different variants on that. And then you've got um, some great graphic organizers that I'd add in there. Actually, I should have added in there uh, placement, ma placement mats. That's one where you can work on a group of four and you can turn the mat and get ideas from uh, different students, pass ideas by question by each student and then pass it through a teacher. Um, think pair shares the same idea. You think about it, you share ideas, you share questions and then you, you uh, discuss with teacher and it, it creates a more vibrant class with uh, plenty more ideas, which are welcome. Okay, and then we've got uh, Bloom's tax mind. That's a lot of different key terms and the different types of words that you're gonna be coming up against in Leaving Cert Economics. You've got um, visual squares as well to help analyze your thoughts. I'm a big fan of mind maps, um, great for Leaving Cert Economics because of the amount of content in the course. Okay, so we moved through this quickly. So that's, a, that's an overview as is. Enterprise there, don't forget, was one of the uh, factors of production there in the bottom left. Okay, so um, yeah, so you can use the hyperlinks to go to different uh, sections and copy and, and paste different things within, within the document. Okay, so um, SkullNet is a good resource. We're looking at the how and the KWHL. Examination study, you get full exam papers and full marking schemes for Leaving Cert Economics. Um, economics helps, another good link there. You can check that out. Khan Academy, 
um, tutor video tutorials, lots of things there. Um, you can create word clouds using Wordle or tag, tag it up. Um, you can also find flashcards on study stack and you can add and create as well. And then Quizlet on top of Cahoots is a good uh, piece of software. Another brilliant piece of software is Edpuzzle for checking um, are your students watching the videos that you put together and also then uh, asking them a qu quiz and then uh, assessing them then on what they've learned in that video. Okay, so um, at different statistical websites, the CSO is the most famous one, uh, probably arguably the most famous one in Ireland, has all the stats for all products and services, how much of different things are selling, um, what's been the change year on year. So you get stats and, and economists, and economics loves looking at statistics from one year or 10 years or over a period of five years uh, to get a feel for how the economy is going. So you've got the World Trade Organization, that's WTO, um, you see a lot on the news at the moment, uh, given COVID. And you've got UN, United Nations, um, and you've got various different organizations there as well. Okay, so moving forward, um, KWH explained, we can read that yourself. Again, we've talked about that already, so I won't bore you about going through that in any more detail, but if you want more details, the beauty of that is you can actually write in your copy those headings, and then you can or just write when you get used to go write down KWHL and you can use that in every class. You can have that written in your copies for every class. Yeah, it's a good idea, good practice. Okay, Think Pair Share. Think Pair Share is a graphic organizer. In other words, it's a piece of paper that helps gather your thoughts um, and you can share it with your partner in your pair group, which is a group of two. Okay, now these are little brain teasers where you can get together again in your groups of your pair groups of two, and there are an, and little, there are an, an equal number of males and females in the world. Do you agree or disagree? And you can have a discussion with these different things, yeah? Um, an interesting discussion is, is there enough resources in the world land labor capital enterprise for the increase in population and the amount of people we have in the world? Okay, and um, again, other exercises there, brain teasers. And um, these are key words here, key terms for literacy, and also to help you in answering uh, the Leave and Start Economics exam paper. So if you go through those, you can ask what any of those mean, or you can Google them. Um, uh, you can use your dictionaries and find out what they mean or ask me in class. Uh, no point in me reading out the whole list. Um, Cube is a good way of just getting different information, uh, different bits of information, putting them together, um, folding in a cube, and then turn the cube around. You can see the different bits of information, like a summary of your, of your, of your work. Verbal squares are good. It's, it's very similar just to like a mind map. You're writing down your ideas and helping you formulate your ideas into squares and lines and, and bubbles or clouds. Uh, and it's a great way of just maybe getting your uh, thoughts down on paper. Because um, if, you, if you don't write stuff down and you don't maybe create visuals, it tends to maybe go in one ear and out the other. Now here's a piece of software, Wordle, and you can use that one, where you can get all your key definitions from the insert economics and you put them into a, a fancy diagram. It's just a little bit less, a uh, little bit less boring, I suppose, than just writing out your key terms. Okay, so this is the plan then. So um, we start with uh, microeconomics in fifth year, and then moving on then uh, through sixth year. And we won't put in the weeks yet because it can be uh, a work in progress in that um, things change and depending on the speed of the class and all, it can go different uh, paces and, and you can change and swap and depend on what's happening in the economy at the time. So, so it's a general uh, plan, general guideline. Okay, so uh, you've got the learning outcomes then, which are for the for um, leaving Cert economics 2021, and you tie them in basically with what we need to learn. And they've got the so for I'll give you an example: demonstrate an understanding of the scope, purpose, and limitations of economics as a science. Uh, use the book, the workbook, worksheets. Um, use PowerPoints. Um, use KWHL, uh, blue prompts, think, pair, share. And then for assessment here on the right, you can use study clicks. I was saying that was a great resource for ordinary level and, and higher level for great for working out uh, answers to questions from the, from previous exam papers. Really good on that. You can get snippets of, of exams. So yeah, highly recommend that. Um, okay, mind maps. Tony Bazan as well is a good person to, to look at and for the reasons why we'd use mind maps and how it can really help us memorize what we've done. Okay, microeconomics then. So again, the syllabus outcomes here, differentiate different systems. Again, I'm not going to go through that. That's uh, 
standards, you'll see a few changes, but uh, generally standard there. There's some theory then. Keynes, uh, Smith, massive, big, famous names worldwide for economics. They came up with theories on economics. Okay, and then we've got a uh, next topic. It's called the consumer and the utility. You see the top here is where the topics are. It says topics there. So that's the next topic we'd be going on to. Um, and there we can see define economic goods. Um, again, using similar uh, teaching methodologies. Um, okay, so moving on then to the next um, phase, uh, which would be the next slide down here, which is producer supply. And again, that's going to be the next topic. We can read the list of outcomes there on the left. Next one then, we have the market mechanism. Um, again, you've got um, all what you need on those slides. I'm not going to go through each thing because it just take too long. Um, leaving the certificate of economics, the factor market is the next topic we'll be working off to find the facts of production. That's important. Um, the facts of production continued then, so that's a big section. Uh, more on the facts of production because a lot of members of land, labor, enterprise, etc., capital. So that's a big section. In fact, see there's capital, so it breaks it down between the different four uh, elements of, of the factors. Um, and then we move forward to uh, enterprise, which is the last factor of production. So we should be moving on. Yeah, the elasticity now. So elasticity is a new topic then, topic nine in microeconomics. And just make sure you read that there, that's microeconomics. When that changes, you'll see it's macro. Micro deals with the diagrams and all the, the curves, etc. That's the way I remember it. Macro is then a lot of the bit of the theory um, of um, economics and all the general information knowledge about it. Okay, so um, explain the concept of elasticity. Um, price elasticity of demand, how price when it goes up and down, what happens as a result of demand and supply. Um, okay, moving on. Costs, so again, you would have uh, learned a lot about costs in your junior cycle business, um, and in particular in accountancy, variable costs, fixed costs, yeah. Uh, here you've got different types of competition. So now in this topic uh, 11, microeconomics, you're going to go through the different types of competition that companies have within a market. Um, so you've got perfect competition, monopolies, you've got, yeah. Again, you've got our outcomes on the left. Oligopoly is, I was, it was, I was telling you what monopoly was, I think it started in the presentation. So oligopoly then is when you have a few big competitors, and massive big competitors, there's only a few of them. You have to compete against each other. Okay, imperfect competition then. And then we go on to macroeconomics. So it's highlighted in yellow here because you've changed now to macroeconomics, which is another big section within Leaving Cert Economics. And first of all, we talk about something simple, which is national income. So explaining uh, national income, where we get our money from, uh, how we determine whether as a country we're profitable or not through gross domestic product and gross national product. Okay, so. Moving forward then. Yeah, so topic 13, then we're talking about government policies, strategies, aims, and how our government, for example, can improve our economy in Ireland, yeah? So we're all wealthier. We all have more wealth, yeah? So employment is a big part of macroeconomics, and employment is basically jobs, and the unemployment rate in Ireland is approximately 22% from the last thing I read anyway in, in the Irish Times, but uh, yeah, around 22%, um, and that's a big figure, uh, because for a while there we were around 4 or 5%, so it's jumped up an awful lot because of COVID. So unemployment is huge because obviously if you have loads of people out of work, it costs the government and the state loads of money to pay for those people who are out of work. Yeah. Okay, so government then tax and national budget, and this ties into this. Uh, section as well. So topic 13, we've got the national budget every year, the government sits down and says, this is what our, our taxes are going to be. This is where, where we're going to take money off people and businesses. This is where we're going to invest uh, money in business, etc. Tax, there's loads of different types of taxes in the country to try and keep money coming in. And then we spend that then on services and on infrastructure, like for example, new roads, new greenways, you heard about the new 300 million uh, package for um, for, for cycleways, et cetera, in Ireland, as negotiated by the, the Green Party and government. So that's part of that. National budget will be agreed 
uh, soon. That was the program for government, first of all. So this is what we plan to do with um, the government and what we want to do and what we need for the country. And the national uh, budget will hammer out all the figures of what's going to be spent on, on what um, in in collaboration with that document, the program for government, which is the plan for government. Um, okay, so national debt then is how much debt we have in the country, how much money do we owe back to other uh, banks and other people around the world. So for example, we are getting big loans off the ECB, the European Central Bank at the moment at 0% interest. So that's brilliant because it's almost like free money. We do have to pay it back, but we don't have to pay back any interest on top of that money. So if we invest it wisely and help rebuild jobs and get our unemployment rate down, it means it'd be very good for the country. But uh, on the other hand, national debt, too much of it can be bad because if you have too much national debt, um, especially with interest rates, um, you're gonna be paying back a lot, an awful lot of money to um, investors around the world um, for a very long period of time. It means if your debt is high, you um, are spending a lot of money on that and maybe don't have enough money to spend on other important things within the country. So that's your national debt. That's the money coming in and out of the country. Um, Sorry, in particular, it's the amount of money that we owe to investors around the world. Okay, the national budget is, is the document there with the money coming in out. Okay, so money and banking then, and some people pay into banks for uh, a recent economic crisis, which means people lost jobs, people lost money, house prices dropped um, significantly, and there was problems in the economy um, connected to banks in America. Lehman Brothers Banks, for example, was one of the players. Uh, but anyway, so money and banking, um, there's your um, different uh, learning outcomes for, for banking money. And again, they have a big impact on the economy because bankers can be investors. Uh, money's important, currency is important. How currencies go up and down can uh, determine how successful our economy is. Um, for example, uh, when our euro rate is low, um, it means that we can sell more over to England if sterling is high. Um, if sterling is high and the value of sterling is high, that means they can uh, afford to buy more in. So in other words, there's loads of variables there and we'll deal with them in a lot more detail when we're doing currency uh, rates. And you need to be able to work out the formula for currencies as well. Okay, inflation then and CPI is consumer price index. That's the price of goods and services. When you have high inf inflation, it's dangerous to have high inflation quickly. It means the price of goods and services rose up very quickly. Um, deflation is another problem where the price of goods and services deflate and they go downhill very quickly. Uh, both can be uh, big problems for an economy. Uh, we have a problem in inflation in terms of our house prices and in terms of rents in hot spots around Dublin in particular. Um, other things like clothes, for example, might be cheaper in Eastern Europe because we have, for example, pennies where some places in Eastern Europe maybe don't. Uh, so it, it, it depends on a lot of different factors. Okay, so um, international trade then. So this is branching out now in a logical way. So we're looking at trade around the world and how that connects our own trade, our own buying and selling of stuff um, in, in Ireland. Okay, and again, the learning outcomes are there. And moving on, the global economic system in the EU. So tying uh, businesses and goods and services, uh, buying and selling, the importing and exporting of products and services from within the EU and further afield out towards China, America, uh, North America, Brazil, um, etc. Okay, and then the balance of payments, again, very important to learn off uh, different calculations for this. There's going to be a lot of numeracy in this, okay? Um, and yeah, so that's the balance of payments and foreign exchange and foreign exchange rates. Okay. Now, economic growth means the growth, in other words, that we're starting to sell a lot more products and services. Uh, services, don't forget, are like the accountancy for services, online computer services, um, legal services. Uh, so services is a big part not to forget about. Products we know because we can see and touch them. Okay, so economic growth and development. How do we develop? Think of underdeveloped countries uh, around the world, uh, parts of Africa, think of maybe, uh, for example, the Congo, um, and then think of places that are developing in parts of South America, and then think of developed uh, economies such as Ireland's and the Western world, uh, United States of America, most countries in Europe. Um, yeah, okay, so that's economic growth and development. And the idea is to try and develop your economy, so you're selling more products and services, and that you're creating more wealth for its people, yeah, and a better standard of living, 
and also um, better infrastructure, which means bridges, roads, transportation systems, uh, broadband systems, uh, and lots more. Okay. Economics of population. Okay, so some people argue that there's too many people in the world for the amount of uh, factors of production, land, labor, capital, enterprise. And we don't actually have enough resources in the world to cope with the increase in population. I think the population of the world is somewhere around 7 billion at the moment. Um, so yeah, you need a lot of resources to be able to sustain that amount of people. Okay. Right, so we're coming to the end now. So we're looking at the history of economic thought. Again, these are ideas from brilliant people with brilliant minds on how to improve countries' economies around the world. Okay. And shin shin. Okay, right, so thanks for your attention. I hope that was helpful. Um, if you have any questions, you can email me at john.mcgarry at stjosephsrush.com. Okay, thanks for your attention.